Point control. A little too fast. Let's try this. All right, you notice that the sounds from the pod grow softer until they are imperceptible. Having served its purpose and taxed its resources, the pod gives a final hum and shuts down. <clears throat> all right, excuse me. Okay, oh my god, this takes me all the way, all the way back. All the way back to 1990, wow. I would have been, what, 10? Yeah, maybe 1991. I know this game came out oh, 1989, and I have a cold, excuse me. Uh, anyway, the show must go on. Yeah, anyway, yeah, it came out in 1989, but I didn't get to play it till like, a year or two after. But anyway, this is Roger in all his glory. In the flesh right here, the hero of the day, or of the game. Um, yeah. The ultimate spaceman, Roger Wilco. Um, yeah, so what's happened thus far, actually, you know what, I'm gonna look at the pod, because I think this tells us exactly what Roger has been up to thus far in his life. This is an escape pod which safely whisked you away from Bohal's burning asteroid fortress. The skin of the pod plainly registers the cumulative damage long periods of space travel can inflict on a small craft such as this. Alright, so this is a pod that Roger has been um, sleeping in for more or less for an indeterminate amount of time um, after escaping Vohal's um, asteroid just as it exploded. And now we have just been, ironically, collected by this uh, this giant space janitor, for lack of a better description, because that's what it is, it's a giant space janitor that, that collects space junk. And I say ironically because Roger is, of course, himself is also a space janitor. And in this first section here, this junkyard, what we have to do is look for a spaceship, or, a, or a, another pod, maybe. To, uh, to be able to get off it, to get out of it, and be on to the next adventure. So as you can see here, there are several ships that I've already tried, believe, believe it or not, and um, none of them work, so don't even bother. Um, and there are, of course, um, parodies of other space things, other space... Uh, TV shows, space movies, like this one right here, right where Roger is, which I'm pointing to right now. If I'm not mistaken, it's Wiley e. Coyote's uh, Acme Rocket, another one of Wiley e. Coyote's failed Acme Rockets. And this one here, I'm not going to go through all of them because we will literally be here all day for literally hours looking through all the references throughout the entire game. So I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to look at some of them. And this one, Jupiter 2, is, if I am not mistaken, um, Marvin Martian's uh, uh, spacecraft, UFO craft, uh, or whatever you want to call it. My vocabulary sucks, by the way, just as bad as my reading. Various types of abandoned spacecraft litter the floor of this intergalactic junkyard. All this place needs is a junkyard dog, you sure have thought. There might be a dog running around. Um, what's this craft? This is a TIE fighter, but I think they call it what? something else. Hmm, why is he wrong? Why can I not look at this TIE fighter? Alright, there we go. You have to be in the exact spot. That's annoying. This bulbous craft looks like it has seen a lot of action in its day. You you believe it to be a boat a bow tie fighter. Dating back to the Cologne Wars, not the Clone Wars, the Cologne Wars, a true relic. So yeah, some of the humor is hilarious. I'm not being sarcastic. I love the Space Quest humor and all the, pretty much all the Sierra games is humor. I love it, especially this one. Yeah, Space Quest is out of all the Sierra games, Space Quest would have to be, to me anyway, the best saga, the best of all the 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 text-driven. Adventure game? Is that the name of the genre? I'm not sure. Now, of course, it's point and click adventure games. But yeah, these ones back in the late 80s, early 90s were all point and click. And they were so notorious for killing the. Let's, let's speed it up a little bit. For killing the character and making the player go all. start all the way back to where they last saved. 
Whoop, stand. Don't forget to stand and jump. This part here where I just what I just did there, the stand and jump sequence, the sequence of two words, that literally took me weeks when I was a kid. <laughs> when I was like when I first played this. Um, and this is by the way my first space quest that I've ever uh, played, ever laid eyes on, and I absolutely loved it. Anyway, yeah, that part took me weeks because I absolutely sucked as an adventure gamer. And plus I was a kid, so that's my excuse. I think somebody told me how to do it, so um, that's how I quote unquote figured that out. Anyway, Enter Grabber, I think is what it's called. Yep. So I have well, plopping into the C grasp of forward back, slash backward control of the grabber. I have done this, completed this game several times in the past from start to finish. So, which means I didn't continue from the middle and complete it and. You know, so that doesn't really count. Um, press claw, I think it's called. Yep. So yeah, I do know what I'm doing most of the time. All right, so what I'm doing now is collecting, um, collecting parts for this, uh, this craft, this ship that will help us get out of here, out of this junkyard. That's a grinder, which uh, grinds things. <laughs> Alright, so the craft that we're going to get out of this uh, junkyard with is right below us. Press claw again. All right, so this is the first part uh, of, I think, three. Sensing an adequate surface. Alright, so it finds the right spot for it. This right here is the aluminum mallard, which, of course, is a reference to Han Solo's um, Millennium Falcon. Yeah, so we're going to use that. Once we have all the parts, of course, we're going to use that to get out of here. And on to the rest of the journey of the adventure. And just a tip here, do not linger around too, for too long, because this droid, this innocent, quote unquote innocent looking droid, is not. He totally is not innocent. He has a laser gun, there we go, oh, damn, damn, did he get me, did he get me? Oh, they see that? It was about to blow her head off. Oh, not totally off, but it was about to blow a hole right between Roger's eyes, and we just got away. Yeah, anyway, if yeah, if you want to see what happens there, you can try it yourself. Just stand around and uh, speed the game up a little bit so you don't have to wait so long. And you will see that where the third eye is supposed to be, right where the forehead is, is where that robot, where that droid will shoot Roger and it will be a huge hole, bigger, bigger than both his eyes put together. Anyway, I am blabbering on, getting uh, sidetracked like usual. I just keep blabbering on, it's what I do. Uh, <laughs> and there is nobody to stop me, which is a bad thing. Uh, you seem to be in a, a debris enclosed hollow. So all right, but we're in the rats' lair. As you can see, these three rats here, this is their home. They look like giants because they are so close to camera. and they actually are giants. They are giant rats in comparison to Roger's size. You will see in a few moments. All right, look, wires. Some little wires. Okay. All right, look. Hold. You peer into the small opening and notice a tiny reactor, which seems to be providing power for the lights. All right. Take the reactor. These rats love their lights, which is weird because rats don't like light they seem to um, prefer the uh, darkness so that they can crawl around unseen but for some reason those rats those giant rats they love their lights or, well the reactor anyway and I say that because of what's about to transpire what's about to happen to Roger and right here you will see yeah, just exactly I'll slow it down so we can all see exactly how big these Rats are right, slow it down all the way. Here we go. Okay, so I stole their reactor, and they did not like that. And here is one of them. Lucky it's only one, not all three. <laughs> Holy rats, Batman! You seem to have been mugged, and rightfully so, because we stole from them first by some type of large rat. That is no rat. That's more like a a cat. No. That is more like a small dog, if you ask me. As you pick loose fur from your teeth, 
you notice a less smoky feeling. Why is that? It's because we've just been robbed. Like we're in New York. The New York subway. Oh, it's not that bad. But they are, there are. <laughs> I, I was in the New York subway uh, a couple years ago. And there really are a lot of rats there. So, yeah. Um, take wires. Alright. Good thing we didn't have the wires before. Otherwise, we, we would have taken that as well. I'm not sure what this thing on the bottom right is. What it's a reference to or a parody of. I'm sure it's something. Alright, there's our pod once again where we started our new journey. And fortunately enough for us that there is a shortcut back to the rat's lair and fortunately again this time they're gone. Hey look, we can do some stand-up comedy. So uh, what's the deal with these rats? <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> that's as far as my comedy goes. Only up to the setup. Yeah, no punchline whatsoever. Um, uh, look hole. You peer into the small opening and notice a tiny reactor which seems to be... Yep, alright, we've already read that part. Take the reactor again. Yeah, this... Oh, there we go. Okay, no more lights for you guys. And we better get out before they come back. Um, right. And let's not forget the ladder. Grab the ladder and jam it in your pocket, even though it's as large, if not larger, than Roger. Ouch. Which reminds me of that scene from Monkey Island with Guybrush Threepwood uh, putting an entire dog in his pocket. It's awesome. It's hilarious. Anyway, let's look at our inventory before we go on, just to make sure that we have everything. This is, of course, the glowing gem, which no longer glows, which we got from Space Quest 2. Wire, yep. And the ladder. <laughs> the ladder that can shrink all the way down to pocket size. It's, I'm not sure if this was intentional. Look, snake, ladders, snakes and ladders. Anyway, <laughs> just an observation there. This is an auxiliary reactor. All right. Okay, so I think that's all the mallard, the aluminum mallard needs. A mallard, of course, for those who don't know, uh, is a type of duck, I'm pretty sure. So again, yeah, that's the reference to the falcon, the millennium falcon. So get it, duck, falcon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm, I'm not sure what this is. Probably like a robot arm. It's Optimus Prime. Roll out. I'm not sure what this little pyramid is for. Remid. Well, I'm not sure if you can do, do anything with this. Because usually, when the game describes uh, an object, usually you can interact with it or do something with it. Anyway, but not this one. I don't know what. Maybe the original intention of, of the programmers was to be able to do something with this, but they changed their minds, I don't know. And just a fun fact, nothing to do with this game, just uh, that re this thing reminded me. Um, the Great Pyramid of Giza is actually eight-sided. It's, it's actually an eight-sided pyramid. I did not know that. Anyway, let's not fall down here. All right, yeah, Google it, I promise you. It's eight-sided. <laughs> So uh, yeah, that was a cool little thing I I learned just recently. All right, so we have two more ships, and one only one of them can take us out of this junkyard, and it's not this one. Right, look, hole again. All right, an unsuitable look ship. It's a cute little thing. You've never seen anything like it in these parts, but then. Where are these parts? Some writing on its exterior reads, Bowman was here. I, I don't know what that reference is all about. Sometimes it says Hal. Um, for a good time, Don't Call Hal, which is a reference to, don't quote me on this, 2001 Space Odyssey, I think. All right, uh, use ladder. This is where we need the ladder. All right, before we go up the ladder, I learned the hard way. To slow the game down first because it is yes as it says here very very slicky open the hatch you move into position and grabbing the doll finish we open the hatch all right speed it back up a little bit 
All right, almost there, guys. So just bear with me a little bit more. Oh, almost at the end of this section, anyway. Um, okay, at first, just, I am such a slow reader, so I'm just gonna skim through it. Especially when I read out loud, I'm just gonna embarrass myself directly across the chest and seas everywhere. All right, okay. So we put in the reactor. All right. But the wires are too short, so we use wires that we got from that hallway thing, that robot arm looking thing. You carefully connect the wire between the ship and the reactor, putting the tile back. Uh, that robot, by the way, that, that big robot head anyway, that we uh, walk past, that we climb into, we're going to be controlling one of those at the end of the game, so that's going to be awesome. Can't wait. Hopefully we do get there eventually. Um, uh, what else? What else? What else? Look. All right, this diagnostic screen, if I remember correctly, tells us exactly what we need uh, for the ship to get the ship going. All right, so auxiliary, yep, nominal, good. Landing gear, nominal, very good. And the warp motivator, that's the very first thing we got with that claw, where that droid almost murdered our hero. Looks like this bird's in good shape and it's good to go. And all we need now is to sit. Okay. Um. Uh, look computer, I guess. There. All right. Engines on. Stand by. All right. This part here. <laughs> do not get get too excited like I did years ago. And just quickly press take off because that will quickly end our journey yeah so we have to press if you remember one thing remember to press radar number seven anyway and that will prevent us from crashing into the ceiling and dying <coughs> <Excuse me. coughs> you feel a strong rumbling as the ship strains to loosen itself from the, the confines of the junk heap accumulated at its base finally it begins to rise okay you're almost there almost out of the junkyard the ship rises several meters and stops abruptly, and an alarm from the computer attracts your attention. All right, good. That means radar actually worked. The radar stopped it and has alarmed us that we're about to hit the ceiling. So we have to find another way out of here. And so what are we going to do? We're going to blast our way out of here. But before we do, another thing that I learned the hard way was to put the front shields on. Yeah, before we press fire or spacebar. All right, here we go. Front shield's on, radar's on, and fire. The shot blasts a new or orifice in the side of the junk freighter, and out goes Roger onto the next part of his adventure. The pressure generated by the desire of the ship's atmosphere to escape to the considerably, considerably, <laughs> oh my God, lower pressure of space causes your ship to be spit out like a watermelon seed woohoo alright we made it out of the junkyard and on to the next episode of my let's play I'll see you guys then